Hey, it's Bill Gross, the LA probate expert.com with my weekly insights in the real estate market. And every week now, I'm trying to figure out is the market crashing? Is it going up so much that people can't afford to buy houses? Is it going to crash so much that everybody can? And the key reason why I have to do this is I feel like the press, the news that we get in the real estate industry, is so misleading that the last thing they're giving you is actually accurate information. Let me show you what I mean by that. This here, it, this is a uh, so a, a great study from Case Schiller. Now, Case Schiller are probably the number one data analysts across the United States for the real estate market. And they track information and provide data that can be interpreted different ways and provide some nice graphics for me as an agent to use and a nice report that comes out to make available, great. But let's take a look at how it gets used by the press. Here's a graph that shows the rate of appreciation. Now, this is important. This isn't prices going up and down. This is the rate by which housing prices are increasing. So you can see that 2008 and 9 was, in my lifetime, the disaster of real estate, the Great Depression of real estate, a global recession. You can see that the market was, uh, you know, averaging 2, 3, 4% appreciation before COVID. And then, surprisingly, COVID caused prices to dramatically increase. Across the United States, rates 10, 14, 15%. And now the rate of increase has started to dramatically fall. So instead of increasing by 14% year over year, it's now down to the last couple of months to 4.5 or 5%. And the projections are that next year, you see at the low end rates of, of uh, experts forecasting 2.2% appreciation at the high rate, 5.3%. And it looks like Really bad news has come down that much, but is it? What does it really mean to you as a homeowner? Well, for example, if the rate of, of uh, your mortgage, let's say we'll use a round number, 3%, if the appreciation of the house goes up by 4%, that means your house went up, of course, that's the total value of the house, by more than the amount of your mortgage. Or you could look at it like, your appreciation causes your mortgage payment to be free, or at least the interest portion of it. Now, mortgages are both principal and interest, so most people have to pay down some principal. And sometimes mortgages include taxes and insurance, and certainly there's cost to owning a house besides the payment. There's the maintenance and the upkeep and such, but the biggest cost is the interest. If you have a million dollar house and a million dollar loan, and if your interest is 3% and the house goes up only, 5%, you made 2% or $20,000 more appreciation than your interest, as long as you manage the cash flow on that. What's interesting is most people's mortgages are a percentage of the house, not the full amount, meaning your biggest expense is a percentage of the full. Let's say in a million dollar house, your mortgage is 700,000. So at 3%, that's $21,000 a year of interest cost. But if the whole million dollar house goes up only 5%, it goes up $50,000, creating a, a, a improvement or, or a profit of $29,000 more appreciation than interest. Now again, I understand there's taxes, there's insurance, there's utilities, other costs of ownership. But if your house goes up in value by more than the interest cost to carrying it, real estate becomes very inexpensive to own and much more expensive to rent and that's gonna cost more people to do that. So, is the market crashing? Well, certainly not yet. It's still targeted to increase over the next 12 months by 2% to 5.3%, which would be fantastic. And by the way, four and 5% would be phenomenal years. Not as good as the last year, but this has been a once in a lifetime experience perhaps that we're going through. Maybe only the precursor to the 2008 recession when banks were giving money away was the only other time in my experience the market is hot, even as hot as it is right now. So is it a good time to buy? I think if you can lock in a rate, and that's the key to this, it's an historically great opportunity to buy a house and lock in either a long-term place to live or a long-term investment and get some great returns. Is it a good time to sell? Well, while maybe you might think that selling is bad because you're losing profits, if you want to move, there's never been a better time to negotiate the terms that will work for you as in making that 
transition possible for you. So at the end of the day, it's really up to you. If it's a good time for you to sell, sell. Good time for you to buy, buy. And either way, if you have questions or I can help in any way, call me, text me, uh, or email me. I'm here to help you. Make today your best day ever.